Hey guys, and welcome back to the Ringer 57 YouTube channel. Let's talk about the video that was supposed to follow that two-part series. We had a track day. We went to Jake's that night. Uh, it was a great night. Uh, someone laid down antifreeze. We had an hour and a half of wait time. Uh, that topped the cake. Uh, when we started out, I forgot to record the first run. Then the camera didn't want to behave. And I just got frustrated and ditched the camera. I needed data. We need data. To make good footage, we've got to be able to make good passes. So first and foremost, we pulled the data we could pull. We wound up running a 680, then a 660, and then a 639. So we're getting faster. So the whole point of stepping back to move forward worked. We slowed down to go faster. All right, we're back to where we were. The disadvantage to that, it took a 30 shot to get back to where we were. We ended up on a uh, 50 shot, and that was the 639. Now the 60 foot suffering, suffering we got a 159 as the best 60 foot of the night. And I got the log from that. I looked at it. We still flashed to 9,000 RPM, even though I straight let go of the clutch. Okay, I kept three fingers on the bars, pulled the clutch, got ready, staged up on launch control, wide open throttle, and just let the other two fingers go. So it flashed through. That is because the clutch is slipping like a psychopath. So we went to the heavier clutch springs. Now, after the slip, it bogged all the way down to 3,800 RPM. This will all be described in the next video fixing that issue. So that is issue number one. So I've got a video coming up in the next few days of how we corrected that. Uh, I've been spreading out my editing because I've been tired and I'm trying to work on the bike at the same time. Editing takes time. I've only got a few hours a day to do any of this. So the other thing, it took a 30 shot to get back to 660. So it was probably 20, 25. But something we noticed on the dyno is the engine was acting like it was choking out up high. Where it should have been making peak power, it wasn't. So I got it looking at the log, realized that it's pulling a vacuum up high. There should be zero vacuum in high RPM. Okay, the throttle's wide open, it's screaming, no vacuum. So we have a restriction. My tuner uh, at uh, Monster Turbo Systems, aka Stedman's, pointed this out when we were on the dyno that I likely had two small throttle bodies. Uh, they are 38 millimeter ID on the small end, but there's a butterfly in there. So that restricts them down to closer to a 34 or a 36, which makes sense. So, we've got new throttle bodies. They're here. That's the video I was working on today. That's the black. Uh, finding the proper intakes for that, not so friendly. But we got a solution. Uh, I'm eventually going to have to do some more head porting now, because uh, now my head's going to have a shelf in it. I may just plug it up and do that on the bike but I really don't like the idea of sending aluminum through the bike so probably won't do that this year we'll deal with that at a later date but hopefully this will get us back to the 660s on motor and way down in the sixes on the nitrous we are on we are on a 50 shot now uh, we also ran out of fuel injector we are 92% duty cycle so that solution's on the way uh, what else is on the way injectors throttle bodies are here a t-shirt uh, we went through four and a half pounds of nitrous that night. That was a very fun night. Uh, put down some really good passes, found out our traction. Uh, we're still lifting the front end somehow on a 14 inch bike, 14 over bike. So it's 78 or 79 inches wheelbase right now. We're still cranking the front end off the ground when the nitrous comes in and it's holding it up. And it hits every shift, it lifts again. So that's something that needs to be solved. Uh, the front forks are blown. That's probably a lot of my issue. So I need to find a way to brace the bike up, get the forks off, get them rebuilt. And then I'm going to strap them. I'm half tempted to wait and get the forks sent off and cut. Or do a G uh, GSX-R or a GSX-1300 front end. Something to lower it without sacrificing the suspension and then just strap it again because that worked pretty effectively last year. Uh, Thanks for sticking in through this video. I do apologize the track day was a bust. I do have an individual who's been messaging me every day, and he wants me to come back down to Jake's. So hopefully I can pay this individual, or pay his way in, whatever he's looking for, to get some good footage. Because I need to see what the bike's doing to be able to understand what the suspension's doing. All I can do is feel it, and I know the front end's cranking up, and I know the back end's going down. Ooh, I know the back end's going down. I gotta be tucking that tire way up by my taillight. But I can't see that. So, we're going to make these adjustments. Probably not going racing this weekend, but we will be out the next weekend. 
It's about a week and a half till the next track day, and we'll go out and we'll get some good passes in, some good data. Oh, the ECU, uh, the guy's working on it right now. He's found quite a few things wrong. He's going to go ahead and get those buttoned up, test it out. Once it's good, get it back to me, and we'll get that air shifter on a push button. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for sticking in there. Be on the lookout for another video in a couple.